All right, construction cronies, welcome to another framing video, guys. So this is when we're up in uh, Cold Lake doing the uh, subway up in Cold Lake, man. This was this is actually kind of hilarious. Let me let me play this video for a second. I I hurt my back the first night here. Okay, uh, uh, I we did the layout. We started doing some framing, and um, I put my back out as soon as I started doing the framing wall in this. So it's a little crazy. But uh, Murat did an excellent job. He really picked up the, 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 like, picked it up for us, and we got it done. So Murat, I got to shout out Murat on this job. He's so amazing. I love this guy so much. He's actually just the best guy I've ever worked with ever. Okay, <clears throat> let's go into it here. Framing. We are framing a, a Subway restaurant here. It's a, like a fast food joint. You know Subway guys. You've ever had Subway subs, okay? Eat fresh, eat fresh or eat be fresh eat fresh or something some silly stuff like that anyways it doesn't matter what we're doing is uh we've done the layout already okay the layout part i'm trying to teach you guys uh, the layout uh it's just tough okay but just pay attention to things like these corners okay you see how we are overlapping our steel so this this track is is coming over okay and i'm cutting it back uh this is three and five eighths wall so i'm cutting this back four and a quarter always on three and fives okay i'm cutting it back four and a quarter and then all i'm doing is i'm cutting this lip off okay the 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 flange off of the uh uh the, the track so it's being overlapped so when i when i when i put it down okay what i'm what i'm doing is i'm gonna put one just one single pin in the corner i'm gonna get the corner lined up and then I'm going to, well, if this is just a small piece, okay? But I, on this piece here, I'm going to shoot here. That piece is in. And then on this little piece here, too, same thing. I'm going to shoot here. And now we got our corner in. But, for example, say say it's just, it, there's no pipe here, and it's a long piece between here and here. I'm going to shoot the corner in. I'm going to get both of this track and this track perfectly on the corner. And at the same time, I'm going to make sure that they're on the line, all right? They're on the line that I just snapped after laying it out. And then I'm going to move to the middle, and I'm going to put a shot in the middle, and then I'm going to go to the end and do a shot in the end. Once it's secure, okay, it's simple. Two shots in the end, and then it's stagger. Boom, boom, boom. Every 16 inches, okay? Boom, stagger. Boom, boom. Boom, 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 and two in the ends, two shots in the ends. It's simple, 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 simple. Okay, guys? So, yeah, let's see what's going on with the rest of the video. See, we're using the line lasers. This line laser has a 90-degree has a angle. We have multiple lasers, guys. Like, you guys, if you don't have lasers, you're missing. You, you don't, you're not doing, you can't frame without lasers. We, we actually have, like, four line lasers with but they're not just line lasers they're they're 90 degrees and they shoot verticals and horizontals they they they're crazy right i got i myself have three pin lasers up and downs and marat has probably five so we like together we we probably have, have a dozen different lasers that do all kinds of different things okay at our level guys we have we just have like crazy amounts of lasers all right let's so let's check this out uh, I, I there's some things I want to show you guys like first thing you do uh, after you get your bottom track on is you you go along and shoot like you screw in all of your wall studs okay your wall studs here okay you use your line laser you shoot your laser line up the track and you sh you screw in all of these wall studs okay and what we do is we put two screws in every two feet every two feet and and what you do is you angle your screws okay the, the ones on this side you angle them that way and the ones on this side you angle that way simple right that's so so simple guys um but it's it's a thing okay and and then what you do is you can go around these are all floating walls so you can go, basically go around and cut your bottom or your top track based off your bottoms however the however okay there's there is something that might frustrate you and that is your like your existing 
walls, okay, your base building walls, okay, base building walls here, base building walls are going to be almost never, ever, ever level, okay? So what you're going to do is you can pre-cut your track, okay, based on the bottom, but you're going to have to laser it up and you might have to trim some off, okay? You might have to trim some, but make sure no matter what you're doing is you're leaving uh, space. You can see here how we've left space there for the floater or for the drywall to pass through, and then there'll be a floater stud here that locks in, okay? And same thing here. Uh, we're going to put a piece of drywall in here, and there's going to be a floater stud here that will lock in after. Okay, actually, I, I put it the wrong way. It, it, it's going to go through this way, through the drywall into the steel. And that's how the floaters will lock in. Okay, so, yeah, if you guys have any questions at all, please leave, leave them down below in the comments, okay? Because I literally get back to everybody, guys. And there's the, the powder actuated fastening tool. This is actually gas. This is the, or no, this is, is this the, no, yeah, this is the gas one. So we have the 120, the, we have two 351s. And we have the BX3. Uh, there's all kinds of, of, of fastening tools that you can use for doing the steel stud. Okay. Hilti makes all kinds of tools. And we have all of them. We have the powder actuated. We have the gas actuated. We got the battery actuated. All right. It's, it's incredible. Okay. And they're all good for certain things or for framing. Okay. Well, yeah, you can see where we're leaving the, the spaces for the drywall. Okay, and this is our these are our door openings, obviously. Okay, we we always frame our door. Uh, we always stop our track right. We square uh, when I'm doing my layout, I square my door openings. Okay, I square them that way. Even if my track isn't square, I can still see my square line when I'm putting my studs in, and I put my studs to the square line always. Okay, and then we laser them up with the line laser, and then when you drywall. You'd still laser in the door frame, okay? After you put the door frame in, you you still laser in the hinge side always, guys, always, and you leave the spreader bar in till the end. It's it's just it's it's simple simple stuff, guys. Just you, it's it's not that hard. You just gotta really just you have to have patience with this stuff, okay? Patience, man. And you can see there, okay, this is what we're going to do here, okay? We have a line laser that is shooting up this wall, okay? This brace is is screwed into the structural wall here, and, and it's going to keep our, this wall, this stud here is screwed into our structure as well, okay? So now when we put the, the top track in, right, this, this piece of top track in, we have a brace attached to structure and a stud attached to structure. So it's going to be super, super strong. Okay. The only thing you got to do is make sure you have the right elevation. Elevation meaning, meaning your, uh, like, you know, when you have 10 foot studs, you, you want to go 10 foot half inch. Okay. If you got eight foot studs, you go eight foot half inch. Nine. You always leave a half inch because you want to keep your drywall a half inch off the floor always, okay? So when you have 10-foot studs, don't just freaking put them in and squish the, the track down tight to them because then your drywall is going to hit your braces, okay? You got to put your track at 10-foot half inch, okay, or 12-foot half inch. Whatever size of stud you're using for these free rolling walls, you got to put it up higher, a half inch higher for the drywall to be a half inch off the floor, okay? And and then if you have drywall ceilings, don't forget too, right? You need to have a full inch because you have a half inch on the on the ceiling or five eighths, okay? Um, and then but you have to be account for that stuff. But look at Murat on the on the stills. This guy is so this guy's a this guy is just the best, man. I've been having so a, a really good time working with him. I'm so bagged. Like we've been doing so many jobs. I'm totally bagged. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to do video work. Like guys, I've upgraded my whole computer. Like I just spent like crazy money on upgrading my computer. And, um, like I just, I haven't been able to, I haven't had time to edit. We've been working so much, but, uh, so this is what I'm doing. This is another thing guys. That's very important to know. Okay. 
when I when we put the bottom track down, okay, you can't see the black there. Let me change that. So when we put the bottom track down, okay, we're drawing our 16s as well on the floor. All right. So when you when you have a floater here and you you have to know what size of drywall you have. So if you're using half inch drywall, your first 16 is going to be 16 half inch. Okay, if it's five eighths, it'll be 16 five eighths. If it's double layer five eighths, it's it's going to be 17 and a quarter. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? Or if it's double half inch, it's going to be 17. Right, you have to account for whatever drywall is going on the wall, and you have to plan for that, guys. Okay, and 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 so there's some areas. Okay, uh, when when I come off of like um. Uh, like a certain exterior wall or um, something, I will just go a quarter inch because you want to have a, a quarter inch um, away from your corners, okay? Like your, 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 you want to have like your, you want, okay, let me just say this again. One layer is going to be flush flat to the steel, okay? And that's your distance. But the, the incoming layer is going to be one quarter inch back, from from the this flush one okay and that is to give your corner bead room all right so you gotta you gotta know these things and then say if you're coming off a concrete wall like cmu like a concrete masonry unit wall okay you you want to leave three uh quarter inch to three eighths uh space for uh trim tech so again, you'll come off it uh, inch and a quarter, but it's but let, I don't want to confuse you guys. Just think about basic framing and basic materials, half inch drywall. You're gonna come off a half inch, okay? Uh, always leave yourself three quarters of an inch space, no matter what. If it's half inch or five eighths drywall, always come off three quarters of an inch uh, for your for your floater space, okay? For your track space. So what what I mean by that exactly is this track here. Let me uh, let me uh, just say this track. What's going on here? Why is my pencil not working? Hold on here, guys. Oh, I got you. I got you. Okay, so this track here, I'm stopping it three quarters of an inch back from this track. Okay, it's going to be three quarters of an inch. No matter no matter what, if it's five eighths or half inch drywall, I always stop my steel three quarters of an inch. And the same thing. I give myself three quarters of an inch cut here. Right? See this full tab, this full corner. Okay. I'm cutting it flat, I'm, and I'm going to give it three quarters of an inch for the drywall to slip in, okay? That's how I cut my tabs. So, pretty neat, pretty neat. I got a whole bulkhead, like, series, guys, coming. Like, I'm going to show you how to how we frame this whole bulkhead, and I'll go into crazy detail for you, I promise. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be cool. And this is the, this here is showing you the furring wall a bit, but... I'm going to I'll show you more detail on that uh, in the next few videos. We have crazy amount of data coming your way, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments, guys. This is Chris. Bye for now.